Today I want to talk about reishi and the battle against HIV and AIDS. Reishi is one of the top medicinal plants in the Chinese herbal system and has been called the mushroom of immortality. While reishi is extremely rare, it only grows on about 2 in 10,000 plum trees in Asia and was really only available to the Chinese and Japanese royalty for thousands of years. But in the 1970s, the Japanese figured out how to cultivate it and now it's pretty much available to everybody. The Latin name for reishi is Ganoderma and the potent red variety is called Ganoderma lucidum. In China it's known as Lingji and it's also known in Japan as Manantaki. Reishi is widely used for its anti-aging and longevity properties and is known as an overall tonic which helps the entire body system function better. Reishi is non-toxic and there are few known side effects. Interference with other drugs could be possible, especially with immune suppressants, because uh, reishi does stimulate the immune system. And because it's been well documented of reishi's ability to strengthen the immune system, it is also known as the great protector. The active components of reishi include both beta-glucan polysaccharides and triterpenes in the form of ganodermic acid. These active components are found in the fruiting body of the mushroom or the above ground part and also in the mycelium which is the underground filaments that connect to other mushrooms. And it's now being shown that the spores can contain up to 70 times the amount of these active constituents. Dr. Andrew Weil writes that reishi has been the subject of a surprising amount of research in Asia and the West. Research has shown that the polysaccharide beta-D-glucan in reishi boosts the immune system by raising the amount of immune-boosting T-cells. HIV, the virus responsible for causing AIDS, attacks the immune system specifically targeting these T-cells, reducing the body's ability to fight infection. By stimulating these T-cells, reishi strengthens the immune system and its ability to combat AIDS and other diseases. Reishi is also known for its antiviral properties, and studies indicate that reishi inhibits the HIV-1 PR enzyme. And some well-known U.S. medical websites like the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center and WebMD.com list reishi as a component in the treatment of AIDS. And there is a section on reishi at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center website. And quoting from the website, Derived from the cap and stem of the mushroom, reishi mushroom is used as an immune stimulant by patients with HIV and cancer. The active constituents are thought to include both beta-glucan polysaccharides and triterpenes. Reishi contains over 400 bioactive components and is an approved cancer drug in Japan. The Japanese evidently recognize reishi's ability to stimulate interleukins which combat tumors as well as its immune enhancing properties. Studies also show that the glucans in reishi help immune cells bind to tumor cells. Another substance in reishi called canthaxanthin slows down the growth of tumors according to the Prescription for Dietary Wellness by Phyllis A. Balch and other experts. There have been numerous medical journals published in the U.S. National Library of Medicine which have shown reishi to be effective. Health institutions such as the Cancer Research UK, the City of Hope National Medical Center in California, and the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center are now pursuing researches and studies on reishi. And a study in Japan at the Tayama Medical and Pharmaceutical University indicated that ganodermic compounds in reishi were found to be active as anti-HIV-1 agents. And another study published in the October 1998 issue of the Chemical and Pharmaceutical Bulletin found that triterpene compounds found in the reishi mushroom and its spores significantly exhibit anti-HIV activity. I have put links to these studies on the information section of this YouTube page. And if you want to do further research on the studies done on the subject of reishi and HIV, you can use PubMed.org or Google Scholar. And please note that this information is not medical advice and is for information purposes only. Thanks for listening and please remember to subscribe to my YouTube page.